Hey, 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 good morning, guys. My name is Dana, a.k.a. Matt Caster. My friends call me Pod. Now, this particular video here, we're going to go over how to set up Audacity with your recording formats. We're going to come up to Edit, to Preferences, and we're going to start at the very top. Now, under Devices, we're going to make sure that we have Mono checked. Now, our device here is going to be your microphone, and you need to have it plugged in before you open Audacity. Okay, and it will pick it up for you and recognize it. Everything else stays default. Under playback, there's really nothing here you're going to mess with. Under recording, there's nothing you're going to mess with. Under quality, you want to be at 44,100 hertz, 16 bits. Now, this is your option. You can put best quality or you can put high quality. I always leave it at the best quality. Dithering is going to be none. Your high quality conversion rate is going to be best quality and the dither will be on shaped. These are all uh, default right here, so you, you just leave them where they're at. Now the interface, if you notice my meters up here, how big they are, and I'm going to do a video on how to do your layout later on but this is how you get that i want that meter just as big as i can get it now the english language is for the manual that was downloaded with audacity as you can see it's local and these as far as beep on completion it's up to you now under tracks this is going to be uh, your waveform db this is where you should put it uh, that is the name of the audio track everything else is default Spectrograms, you can leave everything here just like it is. Everything here is default. Again, default. Projects. Always copy all audio into project safest. Guys, I cannot emphasize this enough. When you start your project, the first thing you need to do is save that project and name it what you're going to be recording. Now, for LibriVox, when I go up and do my chapters or my poems, that's what I name it as. And that way I can always go back to that original file. Okay, now this is not an audio file. And we're going to talk about that later on as well. This is the theory. When you do your first recording, once you finish it, before you do any edits, before you do anything, you save that file in a WAV format. And we're going to talk about that as well. I promise you it will save you heartache, okay? Now, if you've watched the first video, you'll know the libraries. You've got to install the LAME 3.99, okay? The LAME. This is what converts your audio into an MP3. It'll be for podcasting, LibriVox, ACX audiobooks, they all require MP3s. So as you can see, there's a download button here. If you haven't done it already, you're simply going to click on it and it's going to take you right to that website. And it's going to walk you through and tell you just exactly what you need to do. Now, if again, if you've watched the first video, then you know how to take that and put it into Audacity. And then you would simply come up here and locate it and then you would browse for it, and you'll see right there where it is, okay? The directories, this is simply where it's going to save the temporary files. The warnings, I would suggest making sure that you do have this one checked, mixing down to stereo during export. Again, LibreVox and the ACX require mono files. Now, the ACX gives you an option. You can do stereo files. However, they prefer mono files. So, give them what they want. Now, the effects. These are all your plugins. You have the uh, Ladspa, the LV2, Nyquist, 
V-Amp, and VST. The VST is third-party plugins, but they've got to be 32-bit. Audacity is a 32-bit program. What that means is it can only use a maximum of 2 gigs for processing. Now, grouped by type, this is what I choose. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. We come down to keyboard. These are going to be your shortcuts. We'll have a video on that. Uh, shortcuts, hotkeys, whatever you want to call them. It makes your workflow just go so much quicker than constantly clicking that mouse. And then the modules, don't worry about it. There ain't nothing there. So that's it. It's just that simple to go through and set your parameters for LibriVox. Or the, here again, the ACX is going to be the same way. Our next video is going to be how to save your project before you start any editing whatsoever. All right, we'll see you on the next one. People were pleased to find that Peter Piper had picked a couple of pages for Fable fans at LibriVox. Thankful that this was Thursday the 13th, the Piper anticipated forum fun and a wonderful weekend of recording. This is a test by Helen Z. Ferrara. Had it been an actual LibriVox contribution, it would have been a public domain text, previously published and probably interesting.